Um, so welcome to the UK Global Talent Visa Inspirational Webinar today. Um, today we're going to talk about what is the UK Global Talent Visa, the stage one endorsement application and process, the guidelines, and we will introduce our special guest, um, one of my clients who just received his endorsement and visa, that's Islam Mansour, and um, I will interview him and then we'll open the floor for you to ask your own questions to Islam. Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Michelle Hewer. I'm Vietnamese, Australian, and now British. Um, I'm a global talent visa coach. In 2016, I received the um, endorsement for exceptional talent and went on to become the Tech Nation Visa Ambassador. Uh, the reason is because back then in 2016, it was such a new visa. They needed ambassadors to um, share their story and um, teach people or talk about how they got their um, exceptional talent visa is what it was called back then. Um, the great thing about this visa is that um, you can get a route to settlement. So in 2019, only three years after I got my visa, I applied for indefinite leave to remain, which is like a permanent residency, and then went on to get my British citizenship. Um, I spent seven years in the UK, uh, based myself in Manchester and Newcastle, but I really did travel down to London quite a bit from up north and um, immersed myself in the tech ecosystem in all three cities. Um, they're all very different, but what I found um, most in common with all of them is that um, everyone is very friendly. Um, what you get out of it is what you put in. So I really did um, put a lot of effort, time, um, knowledge. I shared all my experience with people. So I got a lot out of it. Um, I used to be an Australian solicitor um, when I worked in Australia and then became a tech entrepreneur. Um, I wrote about my journey on my, and it's on my website, um, on the Tech Nation Visa blog. Um, and that that um, blog went viral. So that's how I became a Tech Nation Visa or Global Talent Visa coach. Um, I've helped over 500 tech entrepreneurs, C-suites, managers, and tech employees over the last sort of five, six years that I've been doing this. Um, my success, success rate is 90%. Um, the endorsement rate is 54%. And the greatest thing is that when clients submit um, for their stage one endorsement, some of them, my biggest achievements is that they've received a result within three hours uh, to 27 hours. Um, roughly, usually they, they get a result within three weeks, but this is the best result I've received um, with my clients. So that's a huge, huge success for them. Um, so some of my clients uh, have worked for WhatsApp, Sony, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, Zoom, Oracle. So, you know, those big tech companies. But I also help um, entrepreneurs who work for startups, um, CTOs, CEOs, UX designers, graduates, digital marketers. So there's a lot of people that I help in different um, uh, who have different roles and skills. And the great thing about it is even though you have a similar role as other people, your story is different. This is about storytelling. Um, no two people have the same exact same experience and skills and stories to tell. And this is why I love doing what I do. Just a quick disclaimer, I do help um, with the stage one endorsement only. I'm not affiliated with Home Office or Tech Nation um, other than I'm a Tech Nation Visa alumni. So um, when I um, started my tech journey and career, I was the uh, founder um, of a startup called Made With Glove. And that's how I immersed myself in the tech um, ecosystem in all three cities. Um, I promoted myself, I promoted my business. I also shared my thought leadership in the field and my field was in wearable technology. Um, and I did so much out there. People started interviewing me. I um, uh, was quoted in books, I was on panels, I was speaking at events. So I made sure that I was um, well known, I was sharing my knowledge. And, you know, once you do that, people start contacting you because they can see you being very active. I've been featured in TechCrunch, Business Leader, I was a judge at a hackathon. Um, but these opportunities came to me because, um, I, as I said, I was already doing things within the community, and then people come and find you that way. 
And this is how it all started with one blog. So that's on my website if you want to read about my journey um, in 2016. It was right when, you know, Brexit uh, happened. So it was quite a bittersweet moment, but it was uh, something that I feel is one of my biggest achievements as well, because uh, as you can see, it's such a hard process to go through. Um, and when you come out the other side, it's a big relief and a huge, huge accolade when you get it. Um, so these are some of my successful clients that I've um, helped over the years. It's not all of them. Not all of them want to share their story, which is absolutely fine. But these are the ones that have shared their story. Um, you can see they're from different countries. Um, some of them have appeared on my YouTube channel, so you can watch that. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a load of them. And I'm really, really proud of all of them. I remember you know, working intensely with them for about three months. Um, yeah, they've gone on to do great things, living in London mostly and doing some really amazing things for, for the London tech ecosystem. So quickly, what is the Global Talent Visa? It used to be called the Exceptional Talent Visa. It's now called the UK Global Talent Visa. It was a special visa that was introduced to allow highly skilled entrepreneurs and talent working in, the, in digital technology, the ability to apply for the right to live and work in the UK for up to five years. It's a two-stage process. You have to be endorsed by Tech Nation, which is a government body that endorses uh, people for stage one. And in, in order to be endorsed, you need to meet the strict criteria that's set by Tech Nation. And if you are endorsed, then you can apply for your stage two visa. And that stage two visa allows you to live and work in the UK for up to five years, and then you can apply for indefinitely to remain or British citizenship and then British citizenship. It looks like a job application when you look at the guidelines, but it is a little bit more than that because, you know, this is a global talent visa. It's for highly skilled, exceptional people working in the digital tech sector. And if you want to have a look at hashtag Tech Nation Visa, you'll probably find more information about the global talent visa in digital tech. There is a global talent visa umbrella. Then they've got different sectors. So arts, fashion, architecture, science and engineering. Um, so they've got those types of sectors, whereas this one is just for digital technology. The great benefits about the UK Global Talent Visa is that it gives you the freedom and flexibility to work in the UK for up to five years. You can work anywhere so long as it's in the digital tech sector because that's what the visa is for. Then you can apply for indefinitely to remain and British citizenship. You can bring your dependents with you. So that's fantastic. Um, you can also register a UK limited company. So I've helped a lot of students who are on student visas and they're restricted a lot on what they could do with their own visas. So some of them switch to the Global Talent and then that allows them to set up their own um, startups and companies. Um, you can also work for a tech company without the need for a company sponsorship. So again, I help people who are on um, an ICT visa or a tier two general visa, and those visas are a little bit restrictive for them as well. So um, they are attached to the companies that have given them that visa, whereas the global talent visa, they can it's attached to them so they can um, work anywhere they want to um, without um, fear of, you know, being let go and then not knowing what, what their future holds. So this gives you that um, security that if you don't like the company that you're working for or you see other opportunities, other companies, you've got your own visa and you can move if you want to. Um, this visa is also a little bit, it's cost effective. It's not in the thousands in that the stage one endorsement is not in the thousands. It's in the hundreds. It's only when you get to stage two for your visa, you will be paying, but um, the fee is in the hundreds again, but it's the immigration health surcharge fee that you will have to pay, but it's, it's the medical um, surcharge that they charge. But you won't need to pay that until you know that you are endorsed and then you're applying for your visa. What we realized when I helped a lot of clients, and especially after I got mine, was that um, there are some real benefits of getting this global talent visa. You've got credibility because you've got a government body saying that you are an exceptional talent or an exceptional promise, or in other words, you're a leader or an emerging leader in the tech field. And that's a huge accolade. It really does boost your confidence. You can then apply for promotions within your job because you've got your own visa. You're not really restricted anymore. Um, you can also negotiate a higher salary because, you know, sometimes when you're relying on a company to give you a, a visa and a job, you don't feel like you have negotiating power. This visa gives you that. Um, I've ha helped a load of clients, obviously, who were successful. And even since getting their visa, they've just gotten so much confidence and credibility within themselves. 
they've applied for promotion, promotions and they've got it like three times since, you know, they got the visa. So they, they know what they're worth. Um, it also gives you opportunities as well. As I said, you know, the world is your oyster now that you've got the visa that's attached to you and not attached to the company that you're working for. And you become like an accidental role model for people in your own countries as well. Um, if people see um, that someone from their own country uh, that looks like them, who's doing similar things as them, if they can do it, um, I can do it too. Um, so I think, you know, role model is so important for me when I was working in tech, um, you know, being a woman in tech, um, an Asian woman in tech, my big thing was, you know, for role models, you cannot be what you cannot see. And I think representation really does matter in the UK. Um, it also gives you security. I've got loads of clients who are now wanting to buy um, their own property because this visa allows them that security to do that, to really set up and settle in the UK and make the UK their home now. So these are just some of the stats. There are, you know, 120 plus countries where people are applying from. Um, USA, India, Nigeria, Canada, and Russia are the main countries, but there's loads. Um, there's a 54% endorsement rate. So, you know, one in two don't get through. But the great thing is, I'll go through this in a sec, is you can apply as many times as you want to. There are unlimited endorsements as well. So when I applied back in 2016, there was a cap of 200 endorsements per year. Um, but now they've just said, you know, anyone who applies could potentially be endorsed, so there's no more cap. Um, over the years, there's been, you know, around 3,000 successful recipients, and I guess it's so low because of that cap. So now hopefully it'll increase a lot quicker and a lot faster, and there's more of us who are endorsed. Um, you can apply for talent or promise. Talent is if you've got more than five years experience and promise is if you've got less than five years experience. And it's these are just the stats. Um, there's more people who, who get it, who are, who are exceptional talent. Um, there's a 75-25 um, endorsement rate for male, female, but that's just because tech is a male dominated sector um, and hopefully more women are, will be applying soon. And then once you are endorsed and you get the visa, you can join the Tech Nation Visa Alumni, which I do. Um, I have joined and you can attend events. And most of them are in London and you can meet other people who have been endorsed and uh, receive the Global Talent Visa as well. So over the years, there have been you know, a number of applicants who have applied. Um, as you can see back then, there weren't many. I was one of the top 50 in 2016. And then over the years, you know, with lots of people telling their stories um, because I was an ambassador and more promotion has come through uh, about the Global Talent Visa, there's more applications. And, you know, especially during the COVID, I thought there wasn't going to be as many, but I was really busy during COVID. It was, it just picked up, you know, I guess because people were working from home and, you know, people had time to think about their next steps you know about their future and um, so yeah so it's it's just grown over the years um, a lot so hopefully you know more people know about it more people will apply there's a Tech Nation visa report. There have been reports in the last three years, but I feel like this one has the best stats for us. Um, so you can see that the endorsement rate for the countries, you can see how they um, can compare it with each other. But these are just stats. It doesn't mean that if you're from these countries, you don't have a, you have a lesser chance. It's just these are the stats. Um, but I do help a lot of people from Nigeria, India, Pakistan as well. So that's why my success rate is quite high um, because I know exactly what they're looking for. Obviously, I've been through the process myself and I've helped lots of people um, in that in their stage one endorsements. And then with the skills, um, it's not just about tech skills. Um, Tech Nation know that, um, you know, if you're working in the tech sector, you can have a business or technical skill. Well, just because you, it is a, a tech visa, a lot of people, you know, who have software engineering skills, they do apply and they do get it. But, you know, just as many people, business development, product manager, um, marketing, you know, those business type skills, they can still um, apply and they can go on to get their visas as well. So the process is there's a two stage process. So the first stage is the endorsement stage. And the second stage is the visa stage. Within the endorsement stage, you need to, there's two steps. The first step is you have to pay and register online at the home office. So that's 456 pounds. So that's quite cheap. And then once you pay at the home office, you've got 15 um, calendar days to then upload your documents onto the Tech Nation portal. And um, that process doesn't take too long. When I applied, it was all by post. So it was really, 
I uh, had a stack of paperwork to send to Sheffield, I think, and you just to wait, whereas this is all online now, which is great. And then once you've uploaded, they accept your um, application, then you've got, then they've got eight weeks to come back to you about a, um, your result. After, during COVID, it came back quite quickly. And now it's around the three to four week mark that people are getting response. That's the average response time. So um, home office will come back to you and email you to say, yes, you've been endorsed or no, you've not been endorsed. And these are the reasons why. So if you are unsuccessful, um, you can appeal the decision based on the feedback that the assessor has given. And you've got 28 calendar days to respond to the uh, feedback. And then it goes to another assessor and they've got 28 calendar days to review your application and the feedback and your appeal. And then they tell you whether or not you are successful or unsuccessful. If you are successful, you go through to stage two, which is that home office visa application. It's £152. You've got to pay for biometrics as well, which is about £20, I think, from memory. And then your immigration health surcharge, which is that medical fee. Um, and that's in the thousands. So that's something that you, you will have to pay, but only after you get, get endorsed. And then you wait about three to eight weeks um, usually, but it could be quicker. For me, it was a lot quicker. Um, I got everything done, including the endorsement and my visa. I got it within three to four weeks, everything. So, um, yeah, it's, it was quite quick uh, and it was really good. <laughs> And um, so eligibility, again, as I said, you can have a technical or business skills. So these are the types of roles. If yours doesn't actually fit in it, just pick the one that's closest to it and then you can build your story. Um, what they have uh, said, though, that there are specific specialisms that aren't considered suitable. And this is where I get a lot of questions, particularly around people who work for as consultants who work for companies like Capgemini, White Pro, Cognizant, um, PwC, um, KPMG, they're sort of, like, sort of like management consulting companies. They don't really want those who work for those companies to apply because they want you to be working for a product-led digital technology. So working for a company that, that builds its own products or solutions. Um, you can be a founder or an employee as well. So this is where it goes to um, the product-led digital technology company. This is a new definition in the last sort of year to confirm and to clarify that they want you to be working for businesses that provide a proprietary digital technical service product platform hardware as their primary revenue source. So you can work for or be a founder of a digital tech company that develops its own products for its customers and um, by a licensed subscription or selling the, um, the product and no cold consultancies or outsources. So the application pack, it's 15 documents you need to prepare. And this is what I help all my clients with. The 15 documents include a CV, a personal statement, and three letters of recommendations by experts in your field. And that's everyone has to do that. But then you have to then go to the optional criteria and then you need to um, pick um, three out of five criteria and produce 10 documents, okay, to satisfy those criteria. And it needs to be three pages each. So three pages times 15 documents is about 45 pages. But don't be overwhelmed with all that. I'll help you with all that. Um, so if you have more than five years experience, you go for exceptional talent. If you've got less than five years experience, you go for exceptional promise. The difference is um, if you have an exceptional talent or you, you choose the exceptional talent category um, and you get the visa, it means that within three years, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain, which I did. If you apply for exceptional promise and you get it, you have to wait for five years before you can apply for the indefinite leave to remain. So the difference is in two years. So the criteria is the first mandatory criteria. Everyone has to select this. You have to show you are a leader or potential leader in the tech field. And in the guidelines, there are 10 examples of the types of things that they would expect um, someone uh, to show how to show their leadership skills. Then when you go into the optional criteria, there's four and you choose two out of the four optional criteria. So you can show that you have, um, you know, some examples of proven track record of innovation. You can show um, examples of your volunteer work that advances the tech sector. You can show your commercial technical entrepreneurial impact and you can show 
and or you can show your academic contribution. So you just you pick two out of the four and then you, pick, you have to choose a leadership criteria and they all have to add up to 10 documents. And what I generally tell my clients to do is make sure your application is well balanced. So you would have about three or four examples of leadership and then three examples for each of those criteria that you selected to make it up to 10 documents. So these are the common questions I do help my clients with either during my discovery calls that I offer or, you know, um, I've got lots of packages. I've got strategy sessions. I've got review packages. I've also got my one-to-one -one bespoke coaching package. But I do help a lot of people with, am I eligible at first? You know, you need to know whether or not you're eligible to then go on to apply. Um, and then if you are eligible, you know, what, what do your documents look like? How do you present it? And then what what information is relevant that I need to include and what do I exclude because as I said everyone has a different story and you know you've got so much that you've done over the last five to ten years maybe depending on your level of experience I help you sift through what's relevant and what's not for the purposes of the application then because you need to provide you know letters from your experts who can they be um, if you pick the innovations or impact criteria what does that look like and how do you show you're an exceptional leader and unfortunately sometimes people do apply themselves which is absolutely fine and they get an unsuccessful result and they come to me and say I've received an unsuccessful result what should I do should I appeal or can I resubmit so I help everyone with those I do help a lot with appeals and that's where I get a lot of my insights as well I see what assessors are looking for and um, I see what the feedback is so then I can then help you apply the second time around which is you know a lot of people who apply the second time around and that, that I help usually get a successful result because we've got the benefit of the feedback so if you haven't already met me um, uh, through my discovery calls, um, I'd like to see whether or not you're eligible first. So just fill in my eligibility questionnaire on my um, website, and then I can invite you for my 15 minute discovery call. And that will just tell you whether or not you're eligible and whether or not we should go ahead and start applying. Sometimes, you know, it's a risk. It could be a 50-50, but you don't know until you try. And um, with everything in life, nothing is guaranteed. And I do get a lot of people saying, I don't want to apply unless I get it. Uh, that's really hard because there's a 54% success rate or endorsement rate, even though I give you a 90% uh, chance, um, assesses a difference. So we will give you what I can guarantee is a strong application based off the, your experience and content that you provide. So because I've been um, a recipient and also a coach, I've got some top tips um, start early, you've got to budget, you've got to look at your time, you've got to plan, you've got to implement or your, you know, 15 documents, you've got to submit and then think about, you know, if you, you need time to appeal as well, because I do help people who are on different visas that are expiring, um, me included, I had a visa, an entrepreneur's visa that was expiring, and I didn't leave myself enough time. So it was very stressful. So these are, you know, starting as early as you can to give you that time, because it is already a stressful process. Have your application checked before submission? So, you know, this is what I do as well. I help people by just looking at the application before to, because once you submit, it's too late sometimes when they, when you're unsuccessful. If I can catch it before you submit, at least you've got a better chance um, to, you know, to fix it before, you know, it's harder to, to change someone's mind, like the assessor's decision, than it is to fix what you've done. Um, your network is your net worth in this. You are relying on people, experts, people you've worked with the last five years to help vouch for you. Um, they're not only assessing you, but they're assessing your experts as well and the people that are supporting you in the application. The process is about self-promotion as well. If you're not confident in your abilities and you can't share that or articulate that, the assessor's not going to uh, make that assessment. They want you to tell um, them how your achievements, your successes and how good you are um, for them to be confident to endorse you with exceptional talent or promise. Prepare to put in the hard work as well because it's not easy. You know, I've been through it. I've helped so many people through it. It, it is hard. It's, this application process is in addition to your already existing workload. So work, life, personal, you know, this is an extra thing you're adding on your plate. So, um, yeah, you just have to be mindful about prioritizing and also believing in yourself. You know, no one ever thinks, I don't think, because I didn't, that they are exceptionally talented. Like it's a mindset shift 
to have to prove your worth and to show and tell someone that you are an exceptional talent or an exceptional promise. So, you know, believing in yourself and recognizing your achievements and strengths really does help you through this process. And the bigger the reward, the bigger the investment required by you. It really does require a lot of your time and effort to get to the end. Okay, so um, I've done it, I've helped so many people with it, and it is worth it. Okay. Um, so someone who will tell you that it is worth it after uh, spending three months with Islam um, is Islam Mansour here. And I'd like to invite him. This concludes my webinar, but I'd love to invite you. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Fine, thanks. Oh, how well done. It's so great to see you and to, you know, thanks, every Emma. time... Yeah. Every time I see my clients who've gone through the process, it's such a lovely, um, it was hard while we were doing it, you know, I know, I saw you through the journey, but seeing you come out the other end, I'm just so proud of everything that you've achieved. Thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah, it was actually a quite hard journey. I mean, during the three months, really, uh, I was like on an English Naruto Costa, sometimes I'm doing great and i i think myself i'm for sure getting this visa and some of the times i'm stuck in a document or i don't know what to say or what to write or i have some problem in my life that's affecting the document and the application and i'm saying no it's not yeah. gonna happen and yeah, yeah but after all i got it yay yay i'm so pleased okay so let's get started um so excited so can you tell everyone what is your background introduce yourself and yeah so they can they can learn about you okay uh my name is Lam Mansour. i am a front-end developer uh co-founder and ceo uh at a health tech startup called uh, my genome uh also i have a background in bioinformatics uh pharmacy uh software and software engineering also, I'm a speaker, judge, and I was featured in uh, some health tech articles about my innovations at uh, my genome. Brilliant. So 25% um, of people who apply are founders. So, um, you know, I thought, you know, I don't know if you thought, but I thought there would be more founders who would be applying. But yeah, we only make up 25%. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah. why did yeah so why did you um, apply for the global talent visa? So uh, this is one of the points that was uh, um, I found it a little bit strange in my story. Uh, maybe everyone I've read in the webinars will talk about how he want to go to UK first, or they start to search about how to migrate to UK, coming to UK and uh, work on it. But uh, actually, for me. I was uh, looking at USA uh, due to my uh, uh, startup and uh, during uh, one of the accelerators that uh, I have attended, um, we were uh, uh, invited by a big legal company in USA to learn more about uh, the visas or uh, the options that are available for international founders uh, like me. And uh, the most uh, famous option is called the uh, O1 visa. Uh, it's for United States. It's called extraordinary talent, as I can remember. Um, the visa for USA, I have researched it and attended many webinars. Um, and uh, at first, uh, I liked it. But uh, when I found about the one for UK, the global talent visa, I decided to go for UK for the following reason. In on visa in USA, um, you need uh, actually to be very exceptional talent. I mean, <clears throat> in USA, in order to get the visa, you need to be one of the most best 10% of the pool of applicants. And in order to get the uh, PR or the permanent residency in uh, United States, uh, or the green, it's called the green card, you need to be one of the best 5%. That means you need to do more ex uh, exceptional work after getting into the USA on O1 visa. So that was uh, a big disadvantage for me. The second thing was uh, freedom. Uh, for USA, and if you got the O1 visa, you need to work in the, the same field on the same job for three years, or you will get deported 
if you can't get a PR after two years or if you are going to uh, switch to something else. Mm -hmm. So that freedom, is a, there's no freedom actually for uh, immigrants in USA. Um, the third thing for me was the, the cost. Uh, in USA, you can't get through any legal thing, I wouldn't say even immigration, any legal thing without having a, a lawyer or a solicitor for you. Uh, so for uh, for my example, for that O-1 visa, I needed to pay around two thousand, uh, ten to $15,000 to get that visa, which was, yeah. I mean, I could pay it, <laughs> yeah, I'm, but, it's still very much for me and I think for everyone, but everyone is saying you are paying it because you are investing in future. But I mean, come on, mm -hmm. if there are many <laughs> other alternatives, it would be better. Um, and for sure, uh, one thing for me personally, uh, lifestyle, if we are comparing about lifestyle in UK and USA, UK for sure, I'm used to lifestyle in Europe, especially that uh, I am based in Germany for the last uh, six years. Uh, I've been here, I got my degree working. Um, yeah, so I'm used to that work-life balance, which isn't available in USA. Um, on the other hand, on UK uh, costs, I think for the global town visa were less, more or less. Um, getting PR actually is uh, quite uh, straightforward. Maybe it takes some time, but I mean, it's still straightforward. It's still guaranteed. You have five years, and uh, after that five years, you get your PR, you get your citizenship. That's it. In USA, uh, as uh, I like to remember that quote, uh, everything in USA is dysfunctional, and you have to hope through the loops. That was one of the quotes I heard from <laughs> the one of the lawyers I have uh, asked. Uh, and also in uh, UK, you have uh, that, uh, uh, if, for example, healthcare, you have NHS, it's globally known. And yeah, uh, that freedom, actually, I mean, the best thing really about global talent is that it's really like uh, a PR visa. It's really like a PR, but without getting the PR itself. I mean, I have the freedom to do anything in UK. And uh, yeah, for five years, okay. That's that's cool for me. <laughs> yeah, that freedom really I haven't got in around in four countries I have lived in until now during my life. So yeah, global talent visa for me was the best option in UK. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention uh, that uh, there was also another visa for that was available for me for Canada. But really in Canada also, it needed so much time, it needed around five years to get just the visa. It was, yeah, yeah, it was really bad. So really number one for me was the UK. Uh, after that, maybe USA, but really UK number one, and I decided to go for it and read the guidelines. And that's when my challenges began. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll ask you about that. That's really, you did a lot of research and I think a lot of people yeah, yeah, yeah. do that as well. It's, um, you know, we're, we're immigrants and we need to figure out which is the best route for us. And we have to do that research to figure out what our future holds and what it looks like. And that's great for you. It's not only a visa to live and work in a country. We're looking further than that. We're, we're not just looking at a visa just to stay for a few years. We want to settle. Exactly. And, you know, it, it's a lot, you know, you, all that paperwork and everything. You want to make sure that it's for something. And that that's really good. Thank you for that. I think you've done a lot of research for everyone else. <laughs> um, but thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. No problem, no problem. Yeah. And so, uh, as, sorry for interrupting, but really, as Michelle have said, uh, uh, really the experience of going uh, through the immigration hazards, I have done until now around uh, three times in my life, once in Germany, once in UK, and maybe once in USA, but not completed. Uh, but really, I'd like to say, try to get that once and for all done, because it's really hard every time. <laughs> it's never it is easy. very hard, yeah, it's never easy, it's never easy. Yeah, exactly. So once you decided to apply, like you said, um, what were the challenges and the hesitations, right? I know a lot of people have challenges and hesitations, but then we want to talk about the solutions as well. How did you overcome those challenges and hesitations? 
Um, for me, the main challenges were um, actually after reading that long guideline from a uh, technician, not knowing what to write, not knowing what achievements, not knowing actually if I had those achievements. I mean, I began from the point that I don't know, do I really have a story or not? Do I really have the points they need or not? Uh, do, you really, do I really have... Uh, uh, skills that they look for, or I was just telling things for investors, or that's on. Because let's be honest, uh, the, the assessors on immigration for immigration purposes are quite different from uh, the investors I work with, for example, or with customers from uh, my genome. So I didn't know whether I have things for them, whether I am writing the, whether I would write the right things for them. How could I fill that for, uh, uh, 45 pages application? It's really long. I mean, why would I sit writing 45 page application? <laughs> That's a really important and vital question for anyone deciding to go to the global talent leader. Um, also, uh, as I have said, my confidence really uh, was not so high at the beginning i was uh, i have a lot of hesitations asking myself a lot uh, about w whether i would finish it and uh, one important thing was time as i've said uh, why would i set myself time for 45 page application and i have many other things in my life that i'd like yeah. to finish <laughs> so yeah i was uh, in that dilemma how could I find time for uh, the application? How to write it? What to write? Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, so everyone goes through that. Trust me, I, everyone I've sp spoken to. So there's that there's that challenge. And, and, you know, how do you how do you overcome that? What made you decide to, OK, one, do it and then finding the support to do it or, or do it on your own? Like, you know, people do think about those things. Yeah, and uh, for me, um, it wasn't quite easy, uh, as I've said. Um, so I decided to find solutions. Um, I continued doing the research. Uh, at first, I wrote about some blogs and some online pages, but really, they grew my hesitations and my confidence was low after reading them <laughs> and uh, then i heard about uh, michela and uh, i decided to give it a shot and uh, i called you for a strategy session as i came in yeah we well i we did the eligibility and yeah. then we had the discovery exactly and then and yeah. then we had the strategy session and i think slowly over time you built your confidence to know yeah, yeah. what kinds of things yeah. 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 And I can remember that you were asking me at the beginning of every session, how do you feel right now? And at the end, how do you feel right now after finishing the session? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you felt more really. confident. I think confidence is key and knowing what's relevant. Exactly. One of the most important things you have uh, told me, I remember that uh, you need to stay in a positive mindset so you can remember uh, positive details about you that maybe would help us in writing a better application. And that was really right because uh, during the, the three months, uh, may I remember that every week, I, maybe I remember something new about myself in the last five years. And I told you then we tried to write about that and uh, edit the application together. and. Uh, yeah, so having the confidence and positive mindset was a key during that. Yeah, that's great advice. So let's talk about, um, so once you've gotten over your challenges and your hesitations and you overcame them, let's talk about your experts because they're the ones that have to vouch for you. Um, and, you know, one thing, it's it's scary to ask these people to help you. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, they're people too. Scary, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, the as you have said, uh, the network is really your worth in that application. Uh, and actually in life in general, really uh, having that network would help you to find, uh, mean, to open many doors. Really, it's very important for business, for this application. Uh, I don't know, really, my network helped me a lot in the last uh, five or six years. Um, 
for me, uh, you're asking about the uh, the three experts, right? Yeah, yeah. three as experts. Came, yeah, as you can remember, we have we, I didn't have three experts. I gave you a list of ten or eight people, as you can remember. Uh, we went we went to, uh, together to each one. On that would be okay. That would be that would be okay. And I remember that I was thinking that uh, five of them were okay. And we ended up that choosing only two, and then you have asked me to search for for another one because it was really hard to find experts, three different experts from three different organizations who knows me and would write good things about me. It was really hard because I myself didn't know and asked you you many times, would it be okay to go and ask them to really write that and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was really hesitated. Would they would they really write the good things about me or not? Or they would help me even. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. did they help you? Did they all? So we did find that third one, but did they help you? Really, they helped me more than I have imagined because at first I haven't talked to them in years, especially mm -hmm. during that uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, yeah, I think many of us uh, have not contacted many people in that time. So I really uh, <clears throat> didn't contact them that often uh, for the last year or two, but uh, I found them really very exciting every time I tell one of them that I need your help, your support to yeah. get that visa to UK. They start to ask me, ah, why do you want to go? How is it going? And then if they write and wish me good luck and uh, really I can't thank them enough right now. That's really good. Yeah. So again, it's it's the confidence not only within yourself, but the confidence within yourself to ask your experts to help you. Because I found that really hard exactly. as well. Because will they? But the thing is, what's the worst that can happen if they can't help you? That you move on. Like, you know, you we find exactly. someone else. So yeah, it's exactly. I think it's all in our head sometimes that. You know, we we think, yeah. So yeah, your network is really important, and you you don't think you have made an impact at all. You know, again, it's confidence, but they do believe in you. You know, people don't tell you that they believe in you. That's not something that we discuss. But when you ask for help, people yeah. will help you, right? It's just because you don't want to ask, or you don't really have exactly. need to ask just yet. Yeah. So asking for help, I think, is a big thing. Um, so then we've got the criteria. Now that we've picked three experts, the, the next thing is, okay, there's five criteria. We pick three, but obviously the leadership one we have to pick. So what other criteria did we select for you? Uh, so uh, <clears throat> leadership was mandatory criteria and then innovation and impact, the third yeah. criteria. Yeah. yeah. And then what, what documents did we end up putting against those criteria? For leadership, we have put uh, documents that uh, first I was a judge at uh, MIT 100K competition, and uh, also that I was a speaker in a, a summit or conference about uh, healthcare longevity, and the third that I was mentioned in uh, article. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, that's yep. you and your co-founder. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. So that article was uh, the third thing. Yep. So yeah. it was uh, published in a magazine called Startup Health and uh, it has uh, hundreds of thousands of viewers and so on. So it was really That's helpful amazing. to have that. Yeah. And I was interviewed for it. We have mentioned that as I can remember. And um, one of the investors also from Startup Health was uh, one of the experts that. Uh, yeah vouch for me yeah so that was amazing you had really good um you know leadership um examples yeah, yeah. Um, and exactly. so then yeah so then with your innovation because you have a startup yeah. what innovation documents did we provide well i've provided uh, a document uh, showing the innovations happening at my genome describing them and where we are going um and there was uh, a document about uh, the patent I was co-inventor for and uh, I supplied at uh, United States. And the third document was, um, uh, yeah, a document uh, describing also the innovation work I worked with at a startup in, here in Chile. Yeah, I think you're a bit different. Not everyone uh, 
it wasn't a patent that you uh, submitted. It was an application for a patent. Exactly, and, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And not everyone has that. Um, so if anyone feels like they have to have it, 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 they don't have to have it. If you have it, then that's great. But for you, you had it. And we could have still submitted if you didn't have a, an application, application for patent as well. So it was just the extra thing that you did have. Um, so for the impact documents, I think, you know, impact is very different from um, innovation. Impact mm -hmm. is the optional criteria three, which is the significant technical, commercial or entrepreneurial contributions to the field as a founder or employee of a product led digital technology company. So what we just provided letters, didn't we, to help tell that story? Yeah, uh, we provided three letters confirming the uh, impact uh, I have on entrepreneurial level uh, from customers. Yeah from the startup I work with here in Germany and uh, yeah, one for one and the second one for Mojin also. Yeah, yeah. So there's lots of different examples you can provide for the optional criteria three. We, we just chose yeah, yeah. those those examples. Um, okay, so, um, so now that we've done that and that took three months, like it sounds like when we when we see what we've done, and then we think about the time it took to get there. It, it doesn't show the amount of hard work that you, you know, um, you had to do to get to that point. But once we had the application pack sent online through TechNation, what date? Let's look at dates. When did you submit? And then when were you endorsed? And then when did you submit for the visa? Because that's the stage two. And then when did you get your actual visa? So I submitted my application on 20 June after a final check I had with you, I remember. So and, 20th of June? Uh, yep. Yeah. And okay. I received my endorsement one week later, 27th of June, and that was really exciting. <laughs> really, I was so afraid when I first got the, the email notification that it would be a rejection because it's so fast and I know. I don't know if it's a successful application or uh, a notification for failure. And uh, yeah, so my heart was was pounding for around two to three seconds. And then, yeah, success. <laughs> success. <laughs> but like <laughs> those seven days that you had to wait, because you could have had to wait for three weeks. Like that exactly. seven days. How did, did you just keep checking your emails? Like, how did that feel? Yeah, I mean, during the seven, uh, the, that week around every day, I would go to my application and see whether someone has uh, edited it or not, or looked at it or not. And um, I think I, sub I submitted on Monday and on Thursday, I found that uh, someone looked at it. So I told myself, when that notification came on Monday, maybe someone looked at it on Thursday and then he decided it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so you Give still you still struggle with the confidence. You still think that they didn't <laughs> accept you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so once you got it and we did have, I remember you emailed me, you said, Michelle, I got it. I was so happy. What did when did you apply for your visa and then when did you get get it? I applied for visa on um, 2nd July okay. uh, and uh, three, three weeks later or four weeks, um, around 25 days, I uh, got my visa. That's amazing. So, so you got your endorsement within a week and then you got your visa within sort of three, four weeks? So yeah. it's around that month. Yeah. It's around that month. Yep. That's and, amazing. Yep. After <laughs> <laughs> and I got my visa and start to prepare myself for uh, going, going to London. Going to London, <laughs> yes, because you're yeah, still yeah. based in Germany. So um, you did have a little holiday to London over the summer. Exactly. How was that? Uh, I was so excited to see London for the first time in my life. Uh, it's also obligatory that you go and uh, collect your BRP and after that you can do whatever you want for mm -hmm. the next five years. Uh, so I went there for a little holiday and um, uh, really I was amazed by London and um, I really remembered every 
every moment of the three months we have together at that application, Michelle. Oh, okay. I really wanted to send you some uh, photos <laughs> when I was there, but uh, yeah, I forgot about it. So sorry. But really, <laughs> I enjoyed London so much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. London is really amazing. It's on another level. I maybe traveled to around uh, 10 countries until now, but really London, another level. It's really a city that's worth living in, I would say. Oh, and everyone's like, everyone's doing lots of emojis in here. It's great. Everyone's like clapping and giving celebration. Thank you so much. All those emojis, that, that makes us really happy. Look, everyone's clapping for you because you got the visa and, you know, and going thanks, to London, thanks. it is like, it's almost like, you know, you're just your whole world is, is has opened <laughs> and all that hard work. Like it took exactly. us three months. It took us three months to prepare. It took mm -hmm. one week, one week to be successful. Like, that's crazy, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, uh, also I'd like to mention that my three experts uh, were uh, the co-founder of my company and uh, a mentor and uh, the investor from uh, uh, one of our investors, I mean. Um, I really told them also about uh, going to London and they were really happy for me. So that's yeah. another thing about having that network. <laughs> exactly because because you're telling them of your plans in the future and they're just as happy for you you know because they supported yeah, right. you but to see you succeed they're like really proud of you for you know that they could help you through that as well so that's amazing yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you can always help them you know if, if you went yeah, through yeah. it and yeah and you you're in the UK and they're not in the UK you they you are part of their network now do you know what I mean so I think that's a, that's a really good thing as well. Uh, yeah. One thing I'd like to mention about that, uh, my mentor who wrote uh, a letter of recommendation for me, actually after getting the visa, uh, we sat together for around two hours for a session or for a meeting. And uh, he started uh, to ask me for help uh, for his new startup. Yeah, so there you go. Ah, okay, yeah, exactly. So See? it's like, uh, yeah, I like that situation because it helped me and now I help him. So I like that. Yes, and that that's what we'll find in the in any tech ecosystem. It doesn't have to be the UK, but everywhere is, you know, as long as you you get what you put in. So, you know, you're all out to help each other. You're in the same, you know, field. Everyone knows something to help others. And that's really not, you're getting started already. Just be <laughs> even before you got there. So now that you've been through the process, oh, thank God, successful one. Um, what advice? Okay, because you have changed so much from when I first met you mm -hmm. to now. And I love seeing that transformation. Like you can't stop smiling. Every time I talk to you, you can't <laughs> stop smiling. Um, what advice would you give to the people who are applying now? Because you've been through that journey. Uh, so number one, before anything, uh, just talk to Michelle. <laughs> even for that, <laughs> even for that uh, discovery call, I mean, uh, it's really helpful to have someone who has more experience and who went through it uh, to tell you about uh, uh, what they think about you, what they think about your achievements, or what they think you, you need to do uh, in the future or in your application to be more successful. Uh, the second most important thing would be having that positive mindset and having that uh, confidence in yourself. And I know it's hard, uh, but really, um, I don't think without it, you would write a good application. Because if you are intimidated and you must be intimidated by that, uh, by these guidelines from a technician, and then you say, okay, I'll get my shot. I don't think so. I don't think it would work, especially that uh, from, my, from my experience as someone, actually, I was born in Egypt, so I'm Egyptian based in Germany. So I don't have that much hopes when I am applying for that visa. Uh, so yeah, um, maybe if you think all of that uh, hopes and all of these things would be okay, I'll just try and give it a shot. No, no. Don't don't apply without having that confidence, without having that positive mindset, 
remembering every detail about yourself, knowing that you really are a good person and you really have a good story about yourself. Without that, I think it's just a waste of time. Sorry, but really, yeah, you should have that mindset and confidence that you really are a talent of that deserves that exceptional talent or global talent. That's number one. Uh, after that, uh, stick to the process. Uh, planning, having time, uh, knowing that it's worth it. It's worth that time. It's worth that uh, giving during the three uh, three months we were sitting for a session every week right but actually during that week i would sit and uh, write the documents for around three days three weeks okay so for someone who is a co-founder of a startup and then putting some time for that application and having all things in my life i would really ask myself again why i'm doing that but really it's worth it Stick to the process, plan, have a good plan from the beginning. Don't go and uh, just try everything. No, have a plan from the beginning, time management, and everything is going to be okay. It will be okay. It is okay. <laughs> yeah, and also one thing is, um, you know, not being an intimidated by the guidelines because you think, you know, they, they give examples and you're like, that's not me, that's not me. And as you say, the positive exactly. mindset, it, it, it is you. You have a story. It's worth telling. And, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And uh, one important thing, um, starting from scratch is not bad, but uh, giving up in the middle is really bad. <laughs> That so, that is very good advice. <laughs> yeah, uh, what I mean is, um, I can see a lot of people asking questions uh, in QA, and many would come and ask that, uh, "Oh, I come from that background, so I don't know if I'm good for it." And then they would need uh, to work for uh, six months or a year to have more achievements in their resume or the, in the CV, and then they would apply for it. That's okay. Starting from scratch is not bad. Even some of my achievements, as you can remember, that uh, judging of that competition, I haven't finished it until our first month. So I have done some of these achievements during that yeah. process. So having some having some achievements to do in the future means that you are starting from scratch. Uh, it's totally okay. But giving up in the middle on something that's worthwhile. That's what really it. And oh. uh, yeah, so don't give up um, even if you are beginning uh, from point view. It's still worth it. Just trust me. Um, yeah, and that's an advice from someone who is not just about the visa. It's also from my experience as a startup founder. I really started from scratch. Uh, I really, I remember that first time when I tried to launch that startup that was uh, two years before really launching it. And first time I met some investors, I really got uh, some, uh, I wasn't, I was very disappointed and uh, they were, they really made fun of me. So yeah, and here I am. <laughs> well done. And you've got so like, I was so amazed at all the investments that you received during this process. It was just, I was like, how are you getting this? And you said, oh, I, <laughs> I, I've got a spreadsheet. I, I've worked really hard. And I said, I know you did, you know, and it's amazing. And don't give up. That's that's very, that's very good yeah. advice. Thank you. Um, before we go back, just one more um, question is, you know, this was a very, as with most, but for you especially, um, what did you learn about yourself in this process? Because as I said, I think you, you're one of the very few that really took this on board and made it about your own personal development journey. And in the three months that we worked, as I said, you grew as a person, as an entrepreneur, as someone who your confidence just grew. And you, you again, I keep saying I got so proud of you at the end. But what did you learn about yourself? Because this is about you and your own journey and your process. Um. First of all, uh, confidence, having confidence in yourself and uh, in what you have done in your life. 
uh, knowing that you have already done so much uh, and that uh, you just don't know how to tell the story about it. So storytelling, that's one of the most important things I have learned from you. I feel that I'm good at it, but uh, really you helped me to refine it. Yes. Yeah, because storytelling is very important also in business. It's vital for business and for uh, raising money. So mm. yeah, uh, you really helped me to refine it. So thank you very much. Oh, good. And, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, confidence, storytelling. Um, what else would I say? Yeah, uh, there are many things, but these are the most <laughs> two things that are right now on my mind. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a lot of, thank you so much. I think, you know, your advice as an entrepreneur, I think um, you've got a bit bit of insights into just, you know, how you run your life, your startup, and now, you know, with this application process, how did you go through it? And I think it all kind of merges together. The, the lessons you've learned in this process is going to be very similar to how you apply, you know, your skills and everything for your startup as well. And I, I only have high hopes and I know you're going to be a successful entrepreneur when you get to the UK definitely okay. um, you're okay. working on such innovative um, technology and just doing some great things let's now go to the floor and, and answer some questions there's so many questions um, the first question that I just need to clarify is um, with the stage one endorsement if you apply and you're not successful you don't get a refund unfortunately um, but if you appeal there's no fee and then you get further feedback and then you can resubmit, but you have to pay again. So um, unfortunately, you don't get a refund, but um, I think the opportunity to appeal and then to resubmit is, is better. Um, so you can apply again. I've had I've helped clients who applied. I've helped them apply the, the last time, which is one of them is the third time. So, um, yeah, and they just kept paying for the fee, but they kept getting better feedback. So, um Yes, yeah, so another question is, yeah, is that fees again? Um, Karen, you've asked a question about paying the fee um, as a skilled worker. Will you have to pay it again? I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You'll have to ask an immigration lawyer for that. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so and I don't deal with stage two. I only deal with stage one, so you'll have to ask. I'm really sorry. Um, someone's asked if they're a technical writer, can they apply? Um, the guidelines provide that you must be working for a product-led digital technology company um, and you have to show examples of building products, selling products or being in the, uh, the role of, you know, commercial or technical. So not if you're just going for I'm a technical writer because you won't be able to fulfill the criteria. Um, so someone is a software, Samuel, you're a software developer. You've been working for over three years as a freelancer. Freelancers are a bit of a gray area. They want you to be a founder mm -hmm. or an employee um, and you haven't contributed to any um, open source projects. Um, so um, Islam, as you said, um, you have to start from scratch, right? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you have to start from scratch. Uh, my advice is just... Um, begin right now and begin with a plan i mean it's okay if you don't have anything right now and you want that visa you could achieve all the things uh, that would make a great application in the next 12 months but you should have a plan right now and uh, you should stick to that plan until you have all uh, achievements you need yeah. for your application perfect and um some people are eligible right now but for mm -hmm. me, what I look at is not only are you eligible, but will you fulfill the criteria, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you might be eligible, but you won't be fulfilling the criteria. And that's what Islam is saying is you might, might need to just spend some time to gather your documents, to get some evidence together, take the time to start from scratch and then apply in six to 12 months time. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, so there's another question about... Um, Engineering, yeah. So I only help with people who apply for the Global Talent Visa in digital tech. So unfortunately, I don't help with the arts, um, engineering or the fashion or architecture routes. They have, there's other people that help with that. The reason is because uh, I feel like I'm an expert in the digital technology route. I've been through it. I've helped so many people in it. So there's other people to help with the engineering route. Um, so, yeah, so... Someone's asking about the three pages rule. Mm -hmm. So um, 
it's saying it's very little yeah it is it is three pages we have to squeeze everything and <laughs> do you know when, when I applied it was two pages <laughs> um so now they've increased it to three pages and we squeezed everything in didn't we Islam out like <laughs> yeah, yeah but some some documents were really around uh, two pages and a half so uh, yeah I mean um uh, around uh, three pages is perfect but if mm. it's two and a half it would be great yeah. also no problem and um, Michelle I think many times you have told me that it's more about uh, the quality of the content or what's written more than the quantity or how much is it yeah and it's important with the structure as well we made your application look visually appealing as well yeah because someone has to read it <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. So we made it colorful and we had pictures and we had content and you know screenshots and you know as someone said like three pages is is a lot is not a lot but we used every single white space we had we had to cut and paste you know like we had to be quite strategic about the, the exactly. information yeah the relevance <laughs> The relevant information um now if you've got evidence that's more than five years i wouldn't like to use it but it depends on your story so if you have you know 10 to 15 years and you're going for talent then obviously you know you need to tell a bit of that story so you might need evidence that is longer than five years but the guidelines have said that under leadership and innovation they want you to stick to five years but it's not to say you can't put you know your story and that's more than five years somewhere else so that's what my strategy session was really helpful for um yeah so karen yeah the immigration health surcharge again i that's a stage two question so please do ask a an immigration lawyer about that um fashion designers yes they can apply but again that's the fashion route okay um and i don't help with the fashion route um so Taiwo said you've applied and, and was told my experts were not digital talent, even though they were CEOs of, of tech um, startups. So, yeah, when we talked about your experts, Islam, I know we are going a bit over, but I hope you can stick around. Otherwise, you can watch it on video. No, um, no is that OK? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll finish no up in five minutes. Yeah. Um, no so your, ex your, your experts, how did we prove that they were experts? Because a lot of people think that, you know, just because you're the CEO or CTO of a startup, that they're an expert. Um, actually, every expert, in every letter that you're writing, you need first uh, to have uh, the first product, uh, background about the expert and showing how he or she is an expert in uh, their uh, uh, in their field and uh, along every letter you would have uh, you attach the cd the cd that uh, they have yeah for the last i don't know some but mostly they have the cd for the last five or ten years yeah no one more than ten years for, yeah. for me yeah so that's also something important uh my experts were all uh uh considered relatively young i mean they are all still in their 30s and uh, they were good experts and some experts as i can remember uh, some experts that i've told you about were uh, having like more than 30 years of experience and you told me that uh, they are not eligible so it's more about how their background is fitting with the criteria yeah. So we what we had to do was really highlight their achievements in the tech sector. Just because you're a CEO, or CEO of a startup, it doesn't mean that you're an mm -hmm. expert. What kinds of things makes them an expert is um, do they um, provide their insights for you know mm -hmm. tech, the tech sector? Do they speak at events? Do they write articles? Do they share their knowledge? And you know how do they know? Like if you had a problem. Um, would you go to that person to help solve that problem? You know, things like that. So you have to really sell that expert is telling them about their credibility and highlighting their achievements as well. So hopefully that helps. Um, someone's asking if your visa application is rejected, when can you apply again? Straight away. So there's no yeah. time. Depends on what the feedback is. So if they're saying, you know, you've not got enough experience and, you, you know, then obviously you, you might need to wait a while. But it depends on the feedback. But, yeah, definitely you can apply straight away. Um, so the full cost of applying. Um, so, yeah, so it's a 456 for the um, stage one. 
And then for stage two, it's 152, I think, or 56 for the um, application so fee. It was around 620 pounds, I can remember the overall 620 pounds or yeah. 30. I don't remember. Yet. Yeah, but, but then I you have about 600. Okay, six, about 600, but then the immigration health surcharge. Yeah, that was the, the huge cost. <laughs> So, was that is that six hundred and forty per year? Um, it's I think yeah, it was uh, six hundred forty per year, and for five years I paid around eight thousand two hundred. Three, yeah, it's about yeah. So that immigration health surcharge you have to pay for it up front, and it, and and it's six hundred and forty per year. So if you've got a five year visa, that's six hundred and forty times five. And that's just for you. If you have dependents, then you have to pay for them as well. So that it really does depend. So you're saying about probably four thousand ish. Just keep four thousand. No more. Six. I'm a single guy, so I don't think. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it's about that. Um, so uh, solution architect, yes. That is a skill. If yes, you would be eligible, but again, it depends on if you're working for a product-led company and whether or not you fulfill mm -hmm. the criteria. Um, so yes, yeah, so did you need to provide any proof of fund in your stage two? I don't help with stage two. You can apply for stage two yourself or get a lawyer to help you. So Islam, did you have to? No, no, actually, my advice don't worry about stage two in anything. Just prepare yourself very well for stage one. Really, stage two is very straightforward. You pay the fees, you fill uh, the application online, you, su you submit the documents, and then you get uh, uh, the response within three or four weeks. That's it. Yeah. That's provided you pass, you know, the criminal record check and everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah so that, that's a more of a legal sort of process. But in terms of filling out the form and everything, it's very easy. I did it myself. Islam, you did it yourself. Yeah, I did myself. Um, but stage one is definitely is where yeah. you put your hard work into. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm um, so thank you so much for sticking around for an extra 15 minutes to answer the questions. But no problem, um, no they problem. were really good questions. And thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. I'm so proud of you. As I keep saying it, thanks, you're one of my, thanks. you know, favorite <laughs> clients. And I'm really proud of your achievements. But I'm looking forward to thanks. hearing more when you get to the UK. Thanks very much. And I look forward to meet you. And uh, also one of the things worth mentioning that uh, Michelle has uh, one of the stories about Mahmoud, he oh, is yes. a client of here. Yeah, he was an Egyptian uh, uh, exceptional promise. He got his visa last year, I think. And uh, yeah, Michelle connected me to him and uh, now I have his uh, WhatsApp and we are talking uh, very often. Yay, <laughs> see, I've got a great network and I'm so pleased to introduce my successful clients to my recent successful clients so they can you know now meet up in London they're from Egypt and you know they agreed to to meet with each other and I'm so pleased and yeah this is why I love doing what I do I love connecting people and I love you know sharing anything that I have with you and only so that you can become successful and do what you need to do and keep shining keep being confident because you know confidence is key really it is if, if you believe in yourself then everyone around you will believe in you as well and hopefully you know I can't wait to see how my geno goes and I'm um, yeah really excited thanks Thanks Thank you. Much. All right, I'm going to say goodbye here. But um, yeah, any more questions for everyone? Um, I'll post this. I'll send you a, an email tomorrow. Um, you know, with the YouTube link and everything. But thank you so much, everyone, and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Bye, Islam. Bye. 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 Bye.